the Conservatives suffered a double by-election defeat this week in the safe Tory seats of Bedfordshire and Tamworth, where Labour enjoyed a 23.9% swing from the Tories. Former Business Secretary and GB News star Jacob Rees-Mogg, writing in the Mail newspaper this week, says the Tories are in a torpor not seen since Henry VI's catatonic state. So have the Conservatives reached at the point of no return, or is there a lever the beleaguered Rishi Sunak can pull to turn around his fortunes? A cracking piece of journalism in The Sun this weekend from top politics academic Matthew Goodwin, who said Rishi Sunak is in the last chance saloon and he has just only one thing on his side, and that is time. So what do we think? Is it, uh, is it the moment for Mrs. Starmer to get into number 10 and measure up for curtains? I'm delighted to say that TV personality and lifelong conservative Christopher Biggins joins us and the aforementioned rock star professor of politics at the University of Kent, Matthew Goodwin. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Let me start with you, Biggins. Uh, do you think it is game over for the Tories now? Have you torn up your membership card? Certainly not. I think there's time, and I think time is of an essence at this particular moment. Mm. I think Rishi, if he was to ask the government, uh, the country rather, to go to the um, uh, polls now, I think it would be a disaster. But I think if, if he leaves it a little bit longer, or as long as he can leave it, he will make it up, and we will, we will come through waving our Union Jacks and saying, yes, we are here, and we want to be here forever. Uh, now, we've just lost the line to Matthew. I'll come back to Matthew in just a moment. Uh, look, time, I think, is, is a very good point. A week is a long time in politics. What would you like to hear from Rishi Sunak that you think would inspire more people to vote for him? Christopher. Now, a very rare thing has happened, which is that Christopher Biggins has been silenced. Oh, I think we got Biggins. We lost the audio there. Sorry, we're having some technical problems. Uh, what do you want to hear from Rishi Sunak that might move the dial for him? Well, I want to hear him finding some more money to help people who have no money. Mm. I mean, you know, we can't be having now uh, these awful times where people have to go to food banks. We have to do something about that. We have to do something about the national health. I don't. There's not a money tree anywhere. If there was, we'd all be using it. And we, and, but government is in a very difficult position. There is not the money around that people think there is. But we should be doing things for the people who need it desperately. People, we can't have people starving. We can't have people not, not, not living the proper life they should. I mean, this whole, the whole world is in, in disrepute at the moment. It's just appalling what's happening around the country. I think it's the end of the world, to be honest with you, Mark. I think this is it. I know. This could be our last uh, interview. I do. I do feel, I hope not, but I do feel we are in dark times. Uh, Professor Matthew Goodwin, it's got to be on your bucket list to have a political debate on television with Christopher Biggins. Uh, can I ask you about <laughs> the main thrust of your piece for The Sun this weekend? What did you say? Yeah, thanks, Mark. So essentially, if you look at the by-elections that we just had, they would suggest that the Conservatives are really doomed. Uh, so I've been basically saying, look, what could Rishi Sunak do if he was going to turn things around? Uh, and the reason I say, look, he's got to really make the most out of the time that he's got is because I think there are two things that really matter. First, um, inflation has to fall much further than it has until now, because then that will essentially allow Rishi Sunak to say, look, we are getting over the worst. We are actually beginning just slowly, but beginning to turn the corner. And the second thing, Mark, which I know you and your viewers care a lot about, is the small boats. We've got the Rwanda judgment in November. Uh, that's just around the corner. Rishi Sunak really needs that judgment to go his way. Again, if, if that happens, He'll be able to go into the election at the end of 24 saying, look, you might not like the Conservative Party, but the reality is inflation is coming down. The small boat numbers are coming down. We're beginning to deal with these problems. Will that be enough? I don't know. I would still think, you know, he's got maybe a 5% chance of winning the election. But, but, you know, he really needs these things to go his way now, Mark, in the next year. Well, it's all about momentum, isn't it, Christopher? And I just wonder whether the British public, the voting public, have a profound sense of common sense. And I wonder whether they feel, even if they don't like Keir Starmer, even if they don't like Labour, they might just think, God, it's time for a change. Do you think that's going to happen? 
Well, a, a change would be interesting, and, and there's nothing wrong in change. Changes are marvellous things. What I would like, because we're in such a terrible, terrible position in this country at the moment, I hate the idea of coalition governments. But why don't everybody come together wow. and try and sort out our problems? And the problems are there. We mustn't just have fighting in the House of Commons, saying this and that and shouting at each other. We must all get together and try and solve it. Coalition, no, but get together as a group of human beings who want something better for this country. That's a brilliant idea. A, a government of national unity, just like we had during the war. Biggins, I love that thought. I wish it would happen. I doubt it will. Uh, Matthew, can we talk yeah. about some rare positives for the Tories? It's always been my view that although he's not as charismatic as Boris Johnson, Rishi Sunak edges it as the better CEO of the country than Keir Starmer. Uh, do you think in our increasingly presidential system that this could help Sunak in a year's time? I think instinctively, I, I agree with you, Mark, in the sense that Rishi, I think, is, is adapting to the role. If you saw him on the, the world stage this last week doing the Middle East uh, talks and negotiations, he, he, he looked prime ministerial at points. But look, the reality is um, nobody in frontline British politics today is very popular. Uh, both Keir Starmer and Rishi Sunak really have leadership ratings that are a long way from, say, Tony Blair in the 90s or Margaret Thatcher uh, at her peak. Um, and we, we are somewhat unique in having a pretty unpopular political class. And one of the key things that you just mentioned, which is bang on the money, is it time for a change? Now, that's one of the questions that really goes a long way to predicting the next election. And about 65% of Brits today, Mark, say, you know what, it's time for a change. And when you've got two thirds of the country saying it's time for a change, it's very difficult for any leader, however popular, to, to push back against that. Uh, what would you like to see happening to the Tories after the election, Christopher, if it doesn't work out for them? What direction should they take? They should go and think about what they've done and how they haven't succeeded. Mm. And perhaps in, a, in, in the next election, they can come forward. I mean, I, I think there are problems with every single party we have. And that is the real problem, I think. There's nobody really that, uh, uh, opposing Rishi that I would, like, I would think, yes, this is the man. This is the man. This is the woman that I want to, to take hold of this country and do something. There's nobody there. Uh, what do you think, Matthew? I know it's a little early for the post-mortem, but how do the Tories regroup after the next election if they are eviscerated? Well, I was just going to say, Mark, maybe one thing we might need in this country is a new political party. Maybe we need a new political movement that is more in touch with where the voters really are. My big worry for the Conservatives is that they will wrongly conclude that the answer to this is to is to move away from all of the things that Suella and others have been talking about and they'll, they'll rush behind a penny mordant or some kind of you know one nation kind of wet Tory and and it will be very difficult for them if they do that I think what they need to do and Christopher alluded to this they've got to spend some time in opposition and think about who they are and think about what do they believe what do they want to do to the country? Because at the moment, I, I look at a Conservative Party and I, to be honest, I don't see much conservatism. Uh, I don't see a party that's trying to conserve the country in any serious way. If anything, I see a, a party that's trying to radically change the country in lots of ways that voters don't like. Uh, so I suspect that they will have a lot of time to think about those questions very soon.